Here. In fact, we should go pretty quick as possible. And before we start filming, we'll remind you that I am in booth 727. We're on the air. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to say I am Jim Karnstead and welcome to the New Living Expo once again. If you uh, haven't seen my lectures before, the fun part for me is that every year I share a lot of new knowledge and I make it a point to not rehearse anything or plan what I'm going to say simply because it's more fun to be spontaneous and also to uh, spontaneously let in come into me the experience that I've had, the new things I've learned which are absolutely mind-boggling just in this last year. Now in the handouts that I gave you there we have uh, just the essence of what ionized alkaline water is all about and also a listing of my 68 health videos that I've shot over the last five or five and a half years at the uh, Smart Life Forum at smartlifeforum.org including things, issues on alkalinity, all the latest healthy aging protocol, that's the new buzzword, healthy aging, because it's, we're all going to get older, so anti-aging is not as correct as healthy aging. But when I saw someone who was 101 years old, chipper as can be, I said, well, you know what, there's hope. My landlady is 90 years old, she doesn't have one gray hair. Figure that out, not one gray hair. It's genetic, of course, but she's sparky at 90. So I'm going to start out my lecture with an experiment on alkalinity. And you can choose to do it or not to do it, and I want you to know that it's going to be 100% safe. And I'll start on either side of the room. Okay, just hold that bottle for a second. This is, hold that bottle for a second. Okay. Until we run out, what I'd like you all to do is put a little patch of iodine on your skin if you wish to, just on your arm and blow on it, don't stain your clothing, and pass it to the next person, and don't spill it. And this is totally safe. I, regular iodine should not be taken internally, by the way. Just unscrew it, you got it there? Just put a little two-inch square patch on your arm, and then I'll explain later what's gonna happen in the next, oh, we'll see, three hours or so. And then I'm also going to start something here. I'll pass this round. What you do is take this pH test paper. This is what all the doctors use. It's 5.5, rather, yes, to 8 pH. And this all depends on what you've eaten recently. So take a little patch off like this, and then rip it. And then on that side, just get it lightly wet, and then match the color up to what your pH is right now, okay? Um, I'll start this over here. This is not the iodine yet, this is a pa paper test. Okay. We're going to give you a quick education on what pH is all about. pH is what we call acid and alkaline balance in your body. And many people come up to me and they say, well, it's supposed to be seven, a perfect seven, right? And I said, no. And as a matter of fact, your blood is, uh, starts out at 7.3, where you're almost sick at that point to 7.46. And that's in a range, if you look at this pH table here, from the orange, of course that's four, and this is 10. And how pH works is this. Seven is neutral, and it's logarithmic. So an eight pH is 10 times more alkaline than a seven. A nine is 100 times, and a 10 is 1,000 times more alkaline. And hence we go the other way. Six is 10 times more, five, more acid that is. 5 is 100, 4 is 1,000, 3 is 10,000, 2 is 100,000. And remember your regular soda with phosphoric acid is 2.5. And that's part of my explanation that's coming up on why we have a whole thing of what used to be called just 10 years ago, adult onset diabetes, which is now called type 2 diabetes. And why it's running rampant in, the, in this country and the whole Western Hemisphere. We're talking over a thousand percent increase in the last 10 years. And you look at these kids that are 16 years old and they're shooting themselves up with needles already for insulin. Something's off here. But first, before we get too far into it, I want to give you a little quick history of how I got into water ionization. And that started back in 1973 with the understanding of air ionization. And as just a layperson scientist, I was interested how 
can ions, that is charged particles, either positive or negative, affect you? At the time I was uh, dealing with the air, that's negative ions of the air. And it was Dr. Albert Kruger at UC Berkeley School of Public Health, professor emeritus that was hired after World War II by the US Navy to figure out why people were going crazy in these submarines. Here's top officers from Annapolis at each other's throat after 30 days in these submarines. So they said, it's got to be something. We can't figure it out. So Dr. Kruger was a pretty smart guy, and he worked with some other people, and they developed an air ion analyzer. That is, how many positive charges and how many negative charges are in the air. And he found out that there were no negative charges in the air whatsoever, and all the electrical equipment, the motors and all that were giving off all these positive static charges, and people started getting pale and irritable, cranky, tense, they couldn't sleep. And so it was Dr. Kruger that helped develop the first world's first negative ion generator for the air. And after that happened, everybody in the submarines from then on were totally calm, cool, collected, and were able to withstand up to 60 days or more underwater in a submarine. And why did that happen? Because positive ions are what you find inside most buildings like these sealed office buildings, high-rise buildings. It's recirculating the air, but there's no fresh air coming in. Maybe they're pulling in some, but by the time it goes through the ductwork and gets into an office, it's dead. And about 3 o'clock, people are pulling out their candy bars, and they're uh, getting a little nervous. They start falling asleep, and they go for the coffee. So everyone's around the coffee thing about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, because they've had their coffee in the morning. That's when your energy goes down. What people want to do is get their energy back up. So they developed a term called the sick building syndrome. This is not only the ion levels, but also the huge amount of chemicals that were being circulated in the air for at least the first five or 10 years of the building's construction. These people were breathing benzene, formaldehyde, you name it. And there's a direct curve relationship with the increase in the building of high-rise office buildings and the cancer rate here in the United States. In those buildings, because the windows didn't open, the people were breathing nothing but positive ions, which takes us back to the people in the submarines. And it was probably about that time that in Israel, they developed negative ion generators because they have those terrible winds there called the Hamsin, or the Sharab winds. And in Germany, they have the winds called the Föhn, F-O-E-H-N. In Canada, they have the Chinooks that come Sailing off the Rockies, I've seen this, I've been over to Calgary many times. Unbelievable changes in people. Positive iron winds. In Los Angeles, we have the Santa Ana winds that come whipping across the desert towards the ocean. Highest instance of uh, crazy drivers, the man driver syndrome, right? more accidents, more people in the hospital, all that sort of thing. Because what happens when you breathe too many positive ions? First of all, you get vasoconstriction. Your body increases the production of adrenaline, so you start getting tense, and then you can't relax. In any minor irritation, you're immediately barking at somebody next to you. Well, somebody brings in some spider plants and some ferns and things like that and puts it in their office, and in that section of the office, everybody gets mellow. And why is that? Because off the tips and needles of plants actually come a charge. That is, there's an electron flow because plants are living things. They're in the ground, and they're giving off the leaves these negative charges. So they went on, finally, in 76, I believe it was, uh, friends started importing these negative ion generators from Israel, so they'd look the problem over there. And it was so amazing to me. Plus, I got to use Dr. Kruger's original equipment as an experimentation when I was taking a class, in, at the time, in astrology. My girlfriend said, you gotta study astrology, see how things work. The whole room, bigger than this, People were dozing off, and just, the window was open, but it was a hot, believe it or not, San Francisco summer day. And the people, uh, uh, I plugged in the ionizer in the back, and within probably less than three to five minutes, all of a sudden, people kind of woke up, and they started raising their hands, and everyone got excited, and they were interacting with the teacher, and she says, I don't know what just happened, but she says, I'm sure glad you're all following me now, thanks a lot. I kind of sat back there in the back of the room and chuckled. They said, here's what happens when you breathe negative ions. Now, there's a, a little device that gives off electrons. Well, what negative ions do, 
and they're found in high abundance by waterfalls, by the seashore, when you're taking a shower. Anytime there's action through the air, when you go to water next, you, you have the ability of that movement to knock electrons free from neutral molecules of, of oxygen, of air. They recombine with the oxygen, and then you have what they call a negative ion of oxygen. You breathe it in, and all of a sudden your cheeks get rosy, and your eyes get bright and clear. This is within minutes. And you uh, start feeling more energy, but you actually calm down. You're clear, you're alert, you're balanced. And it's it so amazing for me to watch this happen over and over again. So we did a series of shows, and this is a prelude to my water story I'm going to tell you next, and the alkalinity story. In the, the winds were blowing in Calgary. It was 20 below zero. Within 15 minutes, it went up to 65 degrees. It warmed up that fast. The winds were so strong, I was outside at one point, saw scaffolding going back and forth. These workers going down very quickly, you could tell they were experienced to just get away from those scaffolding so they wouldn't have smashed against the building. People running in doorways, in the shopping malls, just putting their uh, things over because dust was blowing like crazy coming down off the mountains. And <laughs> I went, this is wild. I'd never seen this in my life. So we had a the series of fairs we did up there for nine years. and. Uh, Everybody, you could see them walking around, several thousand people holding their heads with migraine headaches. Remember I said vasoconstriction, positive ions, and they were intensified? So we had a little thing set up with an air ionizer where people would uh, stand under it and we push a little button, have them ground themselves very good, and their hair would plaster down, and they went, wow, that's fresh. No moving parts, just a little gold needle, and they would sit there and I finally put a mirror up and said, just look at yourself and watch what happens. Within less than a half a minute, the cheeks got rosy and they start, started laughing and giggling and feeling really good. You know, a natural high, in other words. That's what you get by a waterfall. We all know how we feel when we're out of Yosemite Falls and so forth. And I went, this is great. So we made a big sign, migraine headaches gone in 10 seconds, guaranteed. And we had a line 30 people long and I would see like mothers and daughters and friends going, you can't believe this, this is like snake oil. You had a migraine headache for three days. What's standing there? Some crazy device going to do? Every single person's migraine disappeared within 10 seconds. Of course, I wouldn't have said that unless I saw it happen that way. Let me get a little water here. This is fun stuff. So then, after doing that for about 20 years, I sold a lot, a lot of ion generators and lectured about the research at UC Berkeley, and the studies actually show you where uh, Dr. Kruger took his students in the School of Public Health. They went to the Bank of America building, measured less than 100, and in most cases, zero negative ions per cubic centimeter. Then they went to Yosemite Falls, and they pulled out their meters, and they measured over 100,000 negative ions per cubic centimeter. That's about the size of a sugar cube. And you go to Yosemite Falls, and there's not anybody that's not laughing and skipping and dancing and having a great old time and it's always a memorable experience. This is also why so many people love to get married around Niagara Falls or have their receptions there because you just feel so good and you're so high. Well, you can do this yourself, of course, at home. So that's air ionization, and I didn't really have any interest in water, frankly, because I said they've done everything they can do with water, reverse osmosis, distillation, charcoal purification, and the list goes on. Not all the crazy stuff you're seeing today. And I said, so that doesn't interest me too much. I like things that are unique, unusual, and as close to bringing ourselves back to nature as possible. So, a friend of mine came back from Japan one day, and he said, you know, he said, uh, I have a girlfriend over in Japan, and we were watching this documentary series on TV, so I asked her to translate it for me. And I have a few at my booth, by the way, of this that are translated. And it was a 13-part series sponsored by the Japanese government, like a PBS documentary series, on the miracle water the Miracle Water series. For 25 years or so prior to this, they had made these machines that were able to reduce high blood pressure, actually uh, treat, I never like to say cure, but treat the effectiveness where they didn't feel type 2 diabetes. It helped osteoporosis, arthritis, rheumatism, chronic fatigue syndrome, Epstein-Barr, MS symptoms, the list goes on and on by drinking this water. And how did they figure out how to do this? Well, after World War II, the Japanese were pretty devastated. So obviously they were really thinking in a life-like direction. 
So the governments and uh, universities sent out teams of scientists to go around the world to find out the places where people live to be at least 100 to 120 years old. And 90 miles down the road, they were dying not at 120, but maybe at the young age of 90. So they said, what's the difference here? They all grow the same food. What's the story? Well, it depends where the water came from. Because in the valleys where the people were living to be the oldest, there were more natural alkaline minerals in the soil. And as the water came down, it was bouncing over the rocks from these high altitudes, picking up electrons out of the air, those negative ions. Because there's a thousand more for every thousand feet you go up in the air. Well, what happened is the, the water mixed with the air, picked up these little electric charges, and when the people drank it, natural water is a six-sided hexagonal shape, and they're in small cluster groups of H2Os, about five to six, whereas bottled water, tap water, filtered water, are in groups of 10 to 13 H2Os stuck together. That's like surface tension. And that's why many people, including myself, good part of my life, didn't like water because it would make me feel bloated inside. But when I was in nature, I could drink it all day and I looked forward to it. I had no idea why the reason, what was going on. So the Japanese did their study and they just didn't quite have a grasp on it until they realized the Russians had started electrolyzing water with high voltage, just electrolyzing it, not negative or positive, I don't know which actually. And they were able to grow crops and things on soil that was so dead and so hard and compact that they'd be twice as big by just electrifying the water. And it's because of these smaller clusters that were created allowed the water to get down into that hard packed soil. So they said, well, what would we do if we had a positive water and a negative water? So what they did is they made a, made a machine with a little membrane in the middle, like a kidney dialysis membrane, the real top, and then did some uh, platinum coated uh, titanium electrodes. And then they put those inside the box turned it on, ran the water past these things, and all of the positive charged items went to one side, the negative pole, and then all of the negatively charged things went through this membrane to the positive pole. And here's an illustration for you here. Just pretend in the middle is a membrane here. And here's your positive ions, calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, iron, and manganese. And your negatively charged items are, let's see here, that's carbonic acid, chlorine, sulfuric acid, and nitric acid. Chlorine, chloramines, chloride, and you're starting to get the point here. A middle, again, is the membrane. So what they found is they started applying this in Japanese hospitals and finally got a patent for using this technology as a medical instrument for the treatment of all the things I've previously mentioned. Miracles were happening. Well, this went on for almost, like I say, 30 years. And uh, the manufacturer said, hey, there's nothing wrong with these. And the water doesn't hurt anybody. It only helps people. And every floor in the hospital would have these machines where the patients would amble on, depending on how healthy they were, before and after their surgery, to make sure they were getting all of the acidic elements out of their body, washing them away, neutralizing them. Because if your body's acid, you are more likely to be infected with a host of diseases. I used to say over 90% of all diseases caused by overacidity. But uh, Robert Young, who published the book PH Miracle, said, no, no, 100% of all disease is caused by overacidity. Well, let's say someone's even a vegetarian but has a stressful life. That will create acidity. As we age, normal metabolic pileup, as we call it, creates acidity. And that's why they have what they call the adult onset diseases, which were type 2 diabetes, arthritis, rheumatism, osteoporosis, all these problems, headaches, uh, blocked arteries, on and on and on. Well, that's what happens when you get over acid. So they've done their fair share of testing in Japan to make this a medical instrument. And then finally, they made it agreeable for these to be sold to the public. And that's when the revolution happened, and this is probably less than, less than 20 years ago. And they said, okay, they may now be sold. Then they did the documentary, and I don't have a TV thing in my booth, but you can see this amazing stuff. They, uh, got, they sold them to the public, and they were hotter than the iPod. Imagine the first TVs when they came out. First refrigerators. This is the level at which the importance of bringing nature back into your water has become. 
because when you drink water that has extra electrons in it, you hydrate yourself six times better. And during the first use of this type of water, you will probably be running to the bathroom a lot because your body's going, hey, what's happening? You know, to my body. And there's little tiny little rivulets in, around your tissues that have never seen but just a little moisture. So they never, with regular water, really cleansed that well because it was big fat water molecules, not the kind that nature intended us to have. When I have people come to my booth, I have some people that hold the table and they go like this, and they're usually overweight, have skin problems, and you can tell that they're very toxic. They're having an instant healing crisis. And that is so obvious, because I've done this for 12 years now. And other people who are organic, vegetarian, you can tell they stay in good health, already rosy cheeked, come over to the booth and they drink the water and they go, wow, does this make you high? As they sit there and their eyes get bright and they just, you know, just go, wow, I'll some more of that. <laughs> and then uh, just last year here at the show, a lady uh, came up to my booth and she, she drank the water and then she started laughing and she sprayed me, you know, just continuing to laugh. And I took my paper towels out and I went, uh, <clears throat> well, good, did you like the water? <laughs> she said, I said, why are you laughing? And she said, I hate water. I said, you, you hate water? What, what do you mean, you don't drink water? She said, I haven't drank water for at least 10 years. I said, I said we're 70% water. How are you going to, what's going to, what's the deal here? She said, well, I make tea. And I have to admit, I drink colas and things like that too. And she didn't look too healthy, by the way. So, but what, I said, well, what exactly made you start laughing? And she said, if I have even a little cup of water, my stomach immediately, immediately is bloated. That's those large molecules I was talking about with regular water. And she said, this disappeared before I could even feel a hit in my stomach. And that's how hydrating it is. And when you come to my booth, you'll see, if you haven't tried this water, you will be amazed what happens. It's uh, quite a trip, to say the least. And you're welcome to have all you want. We brought plenty today. Freshly ionized this morning. Now, through the years, I was very fortunate to have met many of the Japanese actual scientists from the universities. And every year they have in Japan what they call the Functional Water Society Symposium. And these are all the top professors and researchers in the field of water. And they present their papers on the improvement in digestion. You, they start out with rats. The mucosal activity going on in the systems, you know, how easily it flows. Uh, cancer studies. Arthritis. And then artificially induced high blood pressure in some of these animals. And then humans later. In every case it was helped. And often, in as little as 30 days, people are off their blood pressure medication just by drinking the water. Well, of course, when they came to this country, they weren't really excited about making a power on uh, advertising campaign like Toyota or somebody like that, because they were already having problems in Japan with all these medical claims that people were making selling these things, which of course sounded like snake oil, but also made the manufacturers look bad, and the government said, hey, and the drug companies said, hey, you know, this is not a cool thing to do, you're going over the line here. So you can say help, reduce, rectify, whatever, but don't use the word cure, whatever you do. So, and they also, like the Canadians, when I did shows up there with all the American TV shows they watch, they think we all pack guns. And in Japan, they all think after, especially after the McDonald's uh, million dollar lawsuit win with a hot cup of coffee going in some stupid person's lap as they're driving away from the McDonald's drive-in thing there. Million bucks. They thought we all had personal injury attorneys. And if someone was to detoxify too quickly with this water, boom, they got a big lawsuit on their hands. So uh, it's people like me and other distributors around the country here that are taking in machines, which I prefer the Japanese equipment because it's the old Toyota Hyundai decision you have to make yourself there. And the machines that uh, I have are time-proven power supplies that are designed to run 24-7 in a hospital. In other words, for these various patients. They have, there are studies that show the uh, half the time to heal things by drinking ionized alkaline water. And to get back to simplicity again, we have to remember our bodies are electrochemical laboratories. You gotta remember, electrochemical laboratories. Where do we get the electrons from? If we're in a stuffy building, there's none there. If we canned and dead food, there's none there. Hence the case for raw food, living foods, salads, fresh squeezed juices, things like that. You're drinking your electrons. Now that's the way you get 
your body in shape. Because you know what? Nutrition absorbs into the cell of your body, each of your cells, in direct proportion to the level of the negative charge on your cell wall. Every cell wall is negatively charged. The dominant conductive element is calcium, actually. And then what they call the action of that nutrition going in and the toxins going out is called the sodium-potassium pump. And that's actually a combination of a chemical and an electrical process. Well, you may have noticed, I have noticed as I learned about this sort of thing myself as time went on, because I've been studying health for all these years, but uh, I just, just eat a salad and I go, wow, I feel so much more alert. Or a fresh squeezed carrot just think, oh, that perked me right up there. Or if you even take water outside and pour it back and forth in the sun, you're going to pick up some electrons there, so you'll be able to like restructure your water that way. There's homemade ways to do this, by the way. Magnets on your pipes, there's a number of techniques you could use. But I want to leave you enough time for uh, questions and answers if that clock is correct up there. So as the years went by, uh, I have seen... 1129, very good. One guy called me the next day after he got a machine, or he might have got drops, but now I'll show you, explain the experiment in a second. And he said, you know what? He said, you're not going to believe this. I said, what? He said, uh, my acid reflux is gone. And I've been taking these pills for like two years or three years. And I said, it's a little hard to believe. I, I'd never heard this one before. But one day I said, well, look, if it comes back, let me know. Because I don't like to give stories don't have a follow-up to them. And yesterday this lady said to me this story, and I went, would you write that down? I said, I'll give you a real good discount on your water machine when you can afford one. She couldn't afford one at the time. And it corroborated another story that I heard a couple years ago. She said, you know, I kept coming back to your booth when it was next door in the other building, maybe five years ago or something like that. And she said, I had for like two months this pain in my back, and I thought it was a structural defect somewhere that a bone was off or something, just sticking in the back. It was so painful. And it wouldn't, I took pain pills for those two years. But I kept wanting to drink your water. It makes you want to drink more. She said, first, my mouth got a little dry, and then I had to go and get some more. That's what's happening as I talk, by the way. I'm a water holler. Ah. Reminds me of the uh, Robin Williams sketch on Broadway. If you didn't see it, go rent that at the video store. <laughs> He's got like 50 bottles of water behind him. And he must have had a catheter in him or something like that because he kept drinking these things one after another. That was the funniest part of the whole actual drinking the water like this. Then I videotaped John Gray last Thursday at our Smart Life Forum meeting. <laughs> he brought three glasses of water out, and I, I'm in the back there. John knows me because he got a machine from years ago. He comes by with his wife by my booth, and I'd never seen him lecture because I'm always at my booth. So he said, you know, I'm going to talk a lot about a lot of things about health, healthy fats, certain nutritional things you may not know about. But he said, the most important thing is good water. And he said, I recommend, if you can figure out where to get it, high pH ionized water is the best. I use it at my wellness center. I use it at home. And that's all they drink right now. And I said, hey, John, thanks for the plug. He said, that's right, I got it from you. <laughs> so that, the video stuff is my hobby. And so every year I learn something new. Now I'm going to tell you, and we'll go into more of the story, but I'm going to tell you why I, I passed out the iodine and the low-pH test strips for you to test and match up your pH. If you just ate something, it's not going to be accurate. If you have something acidic, you're going to go, oh, too bad, I'm down here to 5. Well, your saliva should be around 6.5 to 7, right in there. But in the morning, it's going to be about 5, because your body relaxes, the muscles untense, and then you, uh, your acids go into your bloodstream, they come out of your skin, and so forth. So then in the mid-afternoon, you're going, oh, look, I got alkaline. This is after you've eaten for a while, at least an hour or so, all of a sudden it'll start showing closer to six, maybe, six and a half, possibly. And uh, some people will eat a lemon. Of course, it's very acid at that point because lemons are about a five pH. But you get more, more calcium out of a lemon than probably a half a dozen glasses of milk, by the way. Milk is almost completely indigestible by humans. That's cow's milk. Goat's milk is a different story because milk is... 87, I thought it was 85, 87% casein. Only cows can actually absorb that properly. Casein is the ingredient that they use in paints, and they also use it in Elmer's carpenter glue that will hold a chair together forever. They get it from milk. And then 
the molecule is so fat, it can't really absorb through your stomach lining, so what happens is it rolls down through your small intestine, gets into your large intestine, and now you've got the equivalent of warm cottage cheese in a dark environment. Equals colon cancer. Thank you very much. I forget what leading cause of death that is in men and women, but it's pretty darn high. Because you got to get it out. You got to flush it out unless you're taking roughage and so forth. That hangs around there too long. You're asking for diverticulitis, irritable bowel syndrome, the list goes on. Contributes to autism also combined with mercury injections for babies. They try to pass a law that within six months a baby was to be injected with all these drugs. Their immune system hadn't even been formed yet. That's pure insanity and bucks for the drug companies. So at any rate now, um, let's see what, where was going. Oh, so the lemon, 10 minutes later, you put that thing in your mouth at pH tester and all of a sudden, um, it's going to be blue, like an eight, way above what it even says, supposed to be. Because your body has just done a reaction to the acid part. While at the same time, it's pulling in the alkaline, uh, the calcium into your body. So that's why people get confused. They go, wow, I thought lemons were acidifying. No, they're alkalizing. But some people are really acid, it may be irritating to their mouth. So start a program of giving yourself alkaline in some fashion, and I'll tell you a few ways. Same thing with apple cider vinegar. Well, that's also a 5 pH. We're talking about organic apple cider vinegar with the mother still in it, the goopy stuff in the bottom. That's what you want to take. Gloria Swanson, the famous actress back in the 30s, would do at least three shot glasses a day. She got to really like the stuff. Of course, she also did a lot of colonics. And in her 80s, her skin was like a baby because she kept herself alkaline. And it was actually Paul Bragg that popularized that probably back in the 40s or something like that. And his daughter, Patricia Bragg, continued the tradition. So that's one way to alkalize yourself, very simply. The other way is to make sure that you have a proper balance of water and salt. And there's a book called Water and Salt, by the way. And I'm going to give you, if you are taking notes, a few websites to look at. There's uh, the, just, it's called watercure2, the number 2.com. And that's actually the work of Bob Butts, who's uh, a guy that owned a chain of auto stores. And when he met this Dr. Botman Gellidge, um, who said, yeah, water, any kind of water. Well, he didn't know about it, but I had several phone calls with a doctor who was in prison in the revolution in Iran. 1978, I think it was, and they wouldn't give him any drugs. He's an MD to treat their fellow prisoners, but he said, all I can give you is water, I'm sorry. So the length he was in prison, all of a sudden, dude, with peptic ulcers that were in, screaming in pain on the floor, migraine, headaches, so forth, just drank a big glass of water, kept drinking, all of a sudden, they started feeling better within minutes, oftentimes. And, and he said, this is amazing, this is just water. So. He devoted his entire life, he's just passed on, I think last year or so, but he both, uh, wrote several books on the benefits and healing powers of water, and then got into the understanding of pH, which I helped him do that. And also, uh, what I didn't know until this year, the dangers of distilled water and reverse osmosis, which I want you to know about that too. So, so I'm off to do a lecture in New York, not that I'm a doctor or a scientist, to some compounding pharmacists telling them the benefits of mixing their powders and so forth with, with this alkaline water. Because the more electrons you have in your water, whether you're making tea or putting a green drink together or something, your brain and your body thinks you are drinking fresh squeezed juices. Because again, the liveliness of the food and the amount of electrons determines the assimilation of that nutrient into your cells. And you can do an experiment where you take two tea bags, take regular tap water or filtered water, and then the ionized water, dip them up and down. And in less than half the time, the ionized water turns darker, which means those tiny clusters of water go right into the goodies there with these electrons still hanging out. And then you drink it and it's just really tingly. And then you get more nutrient benefits out of the tea. So I propose, because all the Japanese tea houses and the bars use alkaline water. And you go, well, why do the bars use alkaline water? Because of course, uh, alcohol is very, it's ethanol which turns to aldehydes, and this is why they say you got, if you get, drink too much, you get a pickled brain and pickled liver. Well, that's the case. Um, but what they would do is mix their drinks, scotch and water. Well, the ice cubes and the water would both be made out of high pH alkaline water. And the people that drank it, they said, well, this tastes like a 12-year-old malt scotch. It's because it was mellow. It took away all the acidity of the, of the cheap stuff. Well, they also woke up the next morning with no hangover because it helped the alcohol from turning to aldehydes. 
Now in our nutritional world, people generally will use a NAC. If you're going to a wedding party or something, you know you're gonna drink wine, always pack some NAC in your pocket. That's N-acetylcysteine. That stops the process of alcohol turning to aldehydes. Some of the interesting things I learned. Now back to that iodine test I did. And I just learned this, I think it was, it was last year. Isn't that right? Like, I think last year. We had a Dr. David Brownstein come to our uh, Smart Life Forum in Palo Alto. And he said, one of the most alkaline things is iodine. I went, wow, I never knew that. That's a, a new twist. Because frankly, I admit that I have not had enough kelp or salmon, things that might have actual iodine in it. And I wouldn't touch iodized salt with a 10-foot pole. OK, you got 10 minutes left, so now we'll go real fast. So he said, do you know that 96% of my patients back in Michigan are iodine deficient? And that's why they called the area around the Great Lakes the goiter belt. In the 20s, early 20s, kids were walking around 12, 13 years old with big fat goiters on their, their thyroid gland was underactive and expanding, going, give me some iodine. And we didn't know how important iodine is, not just for the thyroid, but for all activities in the body. You can get rid of fibrocystic breast disease with iodine. There's now consumable forms. And the reason that I had you put that on your arm, if that little stain is gone in three hours, you are severely iodine deficient. And we're not just talking acid alkaline here, we're talking about a, a nutrient that we all need. If your pH was five, check it a little bit later. We've got plenty of pH testing paper at our booth 727 down here, and you'll be able to uh, see if your pH changes just in the next hour or two. So the proper way to test for pH is five days, more every morning, afternoon, and evening before you go to bed. Do it for at least like five to seven days. Then you'll get a clear idea of how acid or alkaline you are. Some people are more acid all the time simply because they don't get out in the sun. And you go, what's the sun got to do with it? Well, the sun makes vitamin D3 on your skin. And vitamin D3 was misnamed. It's not actually a, uh, uh, a vitamin at all. It's a hormone. D3, not D2. So now, I was hoping to have it for the show today, um, the D3 5,000 unit ones you could take every day for five or 10 days and watch how you actually start feeling different. Vitamin D is not just for absorbing calcium into your body, but also it regulates almost every hormonal activity in your system. And you can type in vitamin D research. So there's a lot of new research right now. They did one study just recently with uh, African-American uh, black men, and they found out that they gave one group vitamin D a couple thousand units a day at least, I forget the exact amount. The other group got none through the entire winter. Nobody in the vitamin D group developed a cold because their body was absorbing calcium, keeping them more alkaline, and then they just, when you're alkaline, you can't get a cold. I haven't had a cold, flu, or virus for 12 years since I started. I have not been in the dental chair three or four times a year with periodontal surgery and all that sort of thing because my tissues are now alkaline. And I feel great, you know? And I don't mind admitting I'll be 62, so you know I'm doing pretty good. What the heck? No, no weights, no veins, and what, what can you say? Now, uh, I guess we don't go till 12. We go till 10 too. Is that right? Uh, we got 10 minutes left. 15 before we got oh, like four or five minutes. Uh, I give six and eight-hour lectures, and it's so tough. I am just getting warmed up. So let me let me just stop right now and ask for some questions in the, from the audience because there's a lot of things I've skipped over here. Yes. What's that? The urine, pH. Uh, your urine pH, yes. The same pH paper can be used for urine testing. And that's also usually around a five. If it's a six, that's fine. Don't worry about it too much. But if it's always at a five, you got a problem. But you can just do experiments, make some green drinks uh, before you decide to buy a water machine. But I always tell people, if you buy bottled water, a couple, two people, and you buy the, in the glass bottles, drinking your two quarts a day. And the rule is, uh, take your body weight in half, and that's how many ounces you should have. Like, I'm 160, so I need at least 80 ounces of water per day. But not distilled or reverse osmosis, because type in dangers of distilled water on Google, and you will see that out of several thousand people that were studied, the people that drank distilled and reverse osmosis water had a highest incidence of osteoporosis, arthritis, and kidney stones. And the lady whose letter I have, she wrote yesterday, her back pain, she went to the bathroom and she had an extremely painful urination. That pain she'd had for all that time was actually kidney stones that she passed. And now she understood it. Another man who was going in for surgery the next morning, next to her neighbor, my secretary, 
uh, my secretary didn't have any pain pills. He was in agonizing pain. He said, here, just take this water and drink it. Next morning, gentle knock on the door. He said, guess what, Iris? He said, I just passed 15 kidney stones, and I feel great. I'm not going to the doctor today. OK, any more questions? Yes? Yes, we're talking about in the Bay Area, chloramines are now being added to our tap water. The, it's three in the level of effectiveness from what we had before chlorine. It just saved the guy's money. That's chlorine bound to ammonia. And the water ionizers, we don't have the test in yet, but chlorine is ripped apart from any molecular bonding that's happening. So we know that much. How much, and with proper filtration, I also have chloramine filters, by the way. Chloramine killed all the fish in East Bay, all the koi fish in Golden Gate Park. And when the millions of dollars of fish started dying in San Diego, city council said, get that out of our water. So I would uh, encourage you all to check out chloramine.org. Chloramine.org. And be an active citizen. And right here, Senate, Senator, Congressman, Representative, etc. Any more questions here now? Yes? Pardon me? Oh, yeah, homemade ways to make your water alkaline. Make sure you have a proper balance of water and salt. Sea salt, not table salt. That's one way. And you can take like a, uh, at least an eighth of a teaspoon for two quarts of water. Apple cider vinegar. Baking soda only if you're really in a bind because it's sodium bicarbonate. And sodium causes water retention. Potassium is a diuretic. And that's why no salt you get in the grocery stores for heart patients because the doctors don't want water sticking around their heart and causing pressure there. So potassium is a natural diuretic, and I have here uh, this stuff called alkalite. You can just put it in your water. It will bring it right up to a 10 pH, providing you're starting with a 7S. Yes. Apple cider vinegar only, or you mix it? No, you can mix it with lemon juice or whatever, because apple cider vinegar is loaded with potassium, as this is, but not. this is super concentrated. This will do like 16 gallons or something. Uh, and this, the uh, potassium, you'll actually pee more and you'll start feeling better and you'll detoxify from the apple cider vinegar. Uh, if you can find a place from a chemical company, I'm going to hope to carry it soon, and that is potassium bicarbonate. If you have a water softener, switch right now to potassium chloride and not, so, not the sodium, regular salt that they put in those things. It's a little bit more, but actually it'll make you feel better and then filter your water at least. Ionization puts in the extra electrons, that's your, what you're looking for. You can set your water on the north pole of a magnet, and that will also help to make your water more, change the surface tension of the water, and also cheap wine. I did a test once with a friend who's a connoisseur, put some cheap Charles Shaw wine on there. I said, I'm going to give you two wines, but we're going to do a test, you're not going to know which is wine test. And he tasted the wine, he says, yep, this is two buck chuck for sure. So if you now taste this one, this is after three minutes of having fast sit on a magnet. He said, this is excellent, great stuff. I said, that also is two buck chuck. And that's the power of the negative charge. And we have a book and also a pamphlet form of this book called Reverse Aging by Sang Wang. And there he explains, it says, I think he says, uh, finally science discovers the secret of health and longevity. And you'll see around this show a lot of booths uh, touting the benefits of alkalinity. And that's the new buzzword in the health field right now. Kevin Trudeau, everybody says, we've got to get alkaline to be healthy. So I guess with that, is that it? One more question? Pardon me? You take the vinegar uh, once a day? Or? No, she's saying, what do you take the vinegar once a day? No, take as much as you want. You know, if, if nothing else, you know, it'll be, you might pee too much, so you have at least three shot glasses a day, work yourself up there. And then, of course, apples. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Most fruits and vegetables, uh, well, say vegetables, some fruits have too much sugar in them uh, when they're concentrated, um, have about an 8 pH. When you measure the actual pH of the, the juice and the water inside of vegetables. So when you go to a 10, remember that's a thousand times more alkaline, 100 times more alkaline than vegetable juice. So if you mix them together, that's a great idea too, because it has more electrons in one glass of water than 10 glasses of fresh squeezed orange juice. Okay. And also, I always encourage people, in Japan, it's a tried and true technology, but recently we've got machines copycat machines coming out of China, Taiwan, all the place like that. And I can't say anything about them because I don't like to say anything bad about people or products. But you choose for yourself what you want to do and then you're welcome to come back to my booth and I'll answer any more questions you have. And then also available by telephone. I've got my cards. I've got tons of literature to educate you. And uh, one more question. Do we have time for one now? What's yes. your booth number? 
booth number 727, like the airplane, right down in this aisle, facing this way, and you'll see lights all around, and you'll go, you can test the water out there. There's a tank of water. Yes. Watermelon juice. This is very alkaline, yes. And this is why it's so important that people especially have diets of fried foods and things like that, whatever. It's terrific stuff. Watermelons are wonderful. There's not too much sugar in them. It is mostly water. So is celery. Contains a lot of water. So include that as well. Okay, I guess with that, I'll wrap it up. And thank you everyone for coming. And stop by my booth. It's been fun. Okay. What? Do you have this for sale?